What's going on Tamers? It is me, Guy Running Late. I just want to first off apologize for this video going up a little bit late. Uh, this weekend was already pretty hectic for my schedule and uh, then yesterday things got a little bit crazier the, out of things I couldn't control so again I just want to apologize there. In trying to get ahead of all of that I had initially tried to compile all my data a little bit early just to make sure that my recording and editing process was as streamlined as possible but yeah things just kind of kind of got out of hand yesterday and I wasn't able to finish. So why is this important? Uh, honestly, for me, one of my goals this year is to be more consistent with my uploads. And that's the thing that I really struggled with in the past. And uh, for me, it's absolutely a crucial part of building and growing a channel. And I think it also helps build trust between fans and a great audience, knowing that you're the kind of person they can rely on, or you can at least have some sort of consistency in either your content or your scheduling. So again, when I when this sort of thing happens, I feel like I not only let myself down, but I've also let you guys down. So again, uh, please forgive me there, and I'll try to be more consistent with my uploads, despite my schedule going a little crazy sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, on to the actual meta report itself. The Japan Evolution Cups are fully underway. I think they've been underway for about two weeks now, as of the time of this recording, and the meta over here is in a constant state of flux. There are some decks that have seen some big gains and losses across the spectrum that I wouldn't have expected to see otherwise. So anyway, let's hop into it. Let's take a look at some of the event results, a couple of key takeaways, and a closer look at some of the decks that topped over the course of the past week. All right, so as we actually hop into the results, the first thing you're gonna notice is that the Belfobon stocks are on the rise. This sleepy little sleeper deck that nobody really thought about has definitely made a name for itself. It has actually tied with wins with Shine Greymont for the week. And uh, as a result, it's actually pushed the uh, Royal Knights deck down a bit here. I think this speaks to the power and the speed of the Gizmon engine, as well as the ability for Psychemon as a floodgate to just be super annoying to a lot of decks there. Again, Royal Knights being the, the main culprit. I will say that I was really surprised looking at some of the results. I did a bit of a deeper dive here because I was really surprised to see Belfmon doing this well. And uh, one thing that I noticed is like a third of these uh, event tops are coming from uh, Indonesia. So the Indonesian scene is definitely going crazy with this archetype. If you're watching, you're actually from Indonesia, you've gone to some of these Indonesian events. Let me know, wh why is this deck going so crazy right now over there? And then outside of the big upswing of Belfamon here, most results seem pretty stable from last week. Uh, we see, again, Shine Greymon doing very, very well for itself. The biggest loser for this week has got to be the Royal Knights deck. It has half the wins that it had in the previous week, where last week we saw a pretty big surge of those decks doing really well. This week, again, half the rate of those. And I think part of this is because Psychemon is really annoying and not being able to reduce the cost of your Digimon is really painful for that deck. And then there is this nice little deck called Blue Flare, which absolutely eats Royal Knights alive. If you don't believe me, give it a shot yourself. Blue Flare kind of goes crazy in this meta, especially with so many Royal Knights decks running around. Outside of that, we still see War Greymon doing really well for itself. Again, I know you guys know that the restricted list was updated, but that is not going to go into effect until April 1st. And so as a result, we're gonna have four copies of uh, Greymon X Antibody for a little bit longer here. I think it will be interesting to see how this deck fares once those meta changes or those restriction list changes are taking effect here in actual events. So I'll keep my eye on this deck, especially after April 1st. And then outside of the tops here, we see some of the uh, more consistent decks still staying consistent here. Uh, decks in like the champion and rookie tier are pretty similar, I think week over week so far. It's only been three weeks, but I think this is a pretty good indication that these decks are stable. Again, we see things like Hunter, Alphamon is doing really well for itself. We actually covered an Alphamon deck last week, so if you want to take a look at that or know more about what the deck builds look like right now, especially in BT13, definitely pop back and take a look at last week's video. Additionally, things like Red Hybrid are still very strong. I think people really underestimate this deck. It's pretty powerful. You can die almost out of nowhere, it seems like. And so, so I think we'll see this deck stick around for a little bit longer. And then as we go through the rookie level decks here, we see, again, Blue Flare doing really well as a counter to some of the better decks in the meta. Blue Flare has a really nice little spot that I think will make it stick here for a while. And then we come to Bloom Lord and Rosemon. You know, I'm kind of split on these two decks where the bottom end for both of these decks are pretty similar. The only thing that really changes is the top end, whether you're gonna run like Bloom Lord and Hydromon with a bit of Quartz, or you're gonna run like Bloom Lord and Rosemon. And this really gives me like vibes of Black War Greymon and War Greymon back in the day. And so I'll, I'll ask you guys, should I actually combine these two decks because they are so similar on the bottom end? I think it, it really only changes like once you get to maybe like one or two level fives and then the top end level sixes and beyond. So let me know what you think in the comments below. If you guys want, we can definitely just combine these and I think it'll give a, a clear picture for green. And then probably the craziest thing that's happened uh, within the past week is that there have been a non-zero amount of Ragnamon decks topping. And I say that meaning like three Ragnamon decks have topped, and I don't know why this is. There's nothing in the decks that like seems really updated. Keep in mind that Ragnamon did get a little bit of support in the update pack that launched alongside BT13 with the new Destromon, although I don't think that would really push it that far, but it seems like people have been making it work, so 
if it happens again, I guess it's not an anomaly, but for now, I'm just gonna kind of assume that it was an anomaly. <laughs> and then as we get to the in-training decks that have topped with the course of the week, some things I expect to see, things like Bill Star, Chaos Jamon doing well, Duke Mon still doing well with the Duke Mon from BT13 added in, gives the deck a little bit of finish potential that it wouldn't normally have. Um, what's really cool here is there's a really neat uh, Vmon armor deck that has Old Force Regimon in there that I wanna show off a little bit later. So this is a really cool top. And then this, keep in mind, while this might you might think that this is security control with the yellow here it's like a yellow hybrid deck and with the addition of marcus we see that this deck has taken on a new face and so we'll take a look at this deck later when we do a little bit of an in-depth look at some of the decks that topped and with that said let's actually take a look at some of those decks right now so the first deck we're going to take a look at is going to be mirage galgamon now i hadn't seen this deck do particularly well within the past couple weeks it did get one top last week but i feel like i should just show it off because it is one of the newer decks uh, in the bt13 meta and the build is actually pretty straightforward. I mean, you basically take all the cards that they released for Galgamon and Galmon and kind of just combine them into one, one good old deck. What I do like about this deck is that it runs at least two copies of the Mirage Galgamon from BT13, which has the fantastic effect of allowing you to bounce Tamers. And with other burst mode decks running around the meta right now, and Tamers being pretty important as a result of that, being able to bounce those Tamers to deny a potential burst mode for a turn or, you know, a potential Marcus swing is super big. And then finally, getting to your actual Mirage Galgamon burst mode, if you have one of the three cost Tom H. Nordstein uh, Tamers on the field, this allows you to do some incredible plays where you can use the burst mode attack and then unsuspend using something like uh, his own effect, which also acts as a tax on your opponent's hand. Because of course this deck wants to put as many cards in your opponent's hand as possible. And then once it does that, what you can do is you can attack with your burst mode and just basically discard everything in their hand down to eight cards. But I digress. You can basically do that, unsuspend him, attack again. You can rest the Tom H. Nordstein and make him unsuspend again, attack again. And then you can use one of his level five effects to unsuspend again. So this deck has the ability to make at least three to four swings in a single turn out of nowhere. That kind of burst power is definitely indicative of very strong decks, but I think that the deck does have some trouble getting to your burst mode efficiently. And so where other decks might do that a little bit faster, I'm looking at you, Marcus, uh, and the Shine Greymon crew. I think this deck definitely has some potential to make some big swings whenever you need to. Now we cannot have Belfamon doing so well and not take a look at one of the decks that topped this last week. And this one is actually pretty similar to, I think, the first week where we showed it off. Not too many changes, a couple of additions and things like the Skull Greymon, which I love here. The deck has so much discard potential. If you have to get over something big or something annoying, why not just pitch a Skull Greymon in here so whenever you discard it, you can just stick it under something like an Eismon Scatter Mode and then run into something, get the discard, and then, you know, go crazy. And one of the changes that I've seen in this deck, and it hasn't been a widespread change so far, but I do think it's an interesting inclusion, is Death Exmon. Having a Death Exmon plus a Belfamon Rage Mode on the field basically wipes out like the mid ranges <laughs> of, of Digimon. So basically anything under level six. And on top of that, you have to have at least two of something. So with Belfamon Rage Mode destroying things at the beginning of the turn and Death Exmon destroying things at the end of the turn, this combination can be pretty scary. So yeah, only a few small tweaks to the deck, but I think these tweaks are enough to make this deck a fantastic choice if you're trying to win tournaments. One of the wilder and more interesting decks I've seen top is this Ul Force Vigimon slash Vmon Armor deck. And honestly, I'm not sure if this is clunky or not. I don't know, you guys let me know in the comments below. Do you believe in this? So the top end is actually pretty heavy with, uh, you've got one of the newer Old Force Vigimons from BT13, as well as the ex antibody Old Force Vigimon. And then you've got, this is a little bit misleading, there's actually five level fives in this deck. You've got the four here of the uh, Aero Vigimon, and then the one copy right down here of the old jamming one. You've also got all the level fours here who have all the armor purge effects that make this deck as annoying as possible. Strangely enough, one of of a Paladin mode? I'm not really sure how useful this is. Maybe it's good to just have in security to slap something big, but uh, I don't know. We've got four copies of the Arena Tamer as you would expect to have in an Old Force deck. And then alongside you've got two of of the Davis and Ken Tamers, allowing your Digimon with two colors to unsuspend. Basically allowing you to attack again for something like a Flame Drummond. Then of course you've got your Davis Tamers to search out the copies of the cards that you need. And then the bottom is just Vmon, Vmon, and Warp Digivolve Vmon in case you need to get to your level six very quickly. I look at this deck and I think it's really interesting. Sometimes I think that maybe I should probably just go for the Armor Rush package, considering it might be a little bit faster, but who knows? Do you guys have any experience with something like this? And the last deck we're gonna take a look at is one that I think that is really cool. It's a neat little take on the original Yellow Hybrid, which is mostly like recovery focus. It does have some of those elements in there, but it also has a bit of an aggressive package with the inclusion of the new Marcus Tamer. So you can see this deck, Pretty tamer heavy again, got the four TKs, four TK and Kyries. Uh, and then again, all the Marcus tamers you could ever want. The new Marcus from BT13 being able to rest, gain uh, a memory if there's a Greymon or Aquamon on the field, and then pops them for 3K is so, so powerful. 
Outside of that, we do see things like the original yellow hybrids, the fairy mons, and the uh, sylphie mons, and jet sylphie mons out there, as well as the new Agumon Tamers that allow you to pull out a Marcus at any point during your turn and use it as a Digimon. These really give the deck a little bit more extend as far as wiping out the security a little bit faster. Once you've got one of these guys on the field, you additionally just get the Marcus, and then this Marcus can also let this guy evolve. So, a nice little synergy between these two. And with so many yellow and red Tamers, of course you're going to pull out all of the annoying, annoying yellow and red option cards that basically mining to DP, and at this point, Outside of just like Machine Dramon, there's not a lot of Digimon that can't have their DP minus. I think the only other one that comes to mind is Gankumon X Antibody. And while some folks are running him, I think it's a good idea to do so, especially in this meta where minus DP is so heavily or readily available. I don't think a lot of people are doing it. Outside of that, we do see a few of the control tools of Death Xmon, as well as the nice little black Seraphmon here. And then I love the inclusion of the Gallopmon here. What a lot of people don't realize is that while 13 is a pretty heavy cost, you're typically not going to be digivolving into this guy. Having a Digimon that you can just hard play and then have its cost reduced by uh, two for every five cards in either player's trash or both player's trash, excuse me, means this card can get down pretty quickly to just like three costs if both players have a total of 25 cards in the trash. Well, I will say that this is probably not the legacy that Shine Grey and Marcus are going to leave on the Digimon community. I can say this is a pretty cool deck idea. I mean, it takes something that we've known before and expands on with some of the newer cards. And I will say not even just looking at the results, but also even in my own locals, I've seen that these Shine Greymon players are willing to go a little bit out of the box now with some of their deck builds. I've seen everything from something similar to this, and even things like Venusmon in the deck is a fantastic idea in case you go up against the mirror. Being able to stop all the Digimon that have security attack plus one, or minus one in this case, for a single turn, might help you to win the game. Anyways, folks, that's going to be it for this week's Japanese meta report for the Digimon card game. Bell for Monster Tonks going crazy. Royal Knights in shambles. There's a non-zero amount of Ragnamon topping uh, do you think that's an actual anomaly or something that we should just keep our eye on? Also, let me know in the comments below. Should we combine Bloom Lord and Rosemon as one archetype considering the bottom halves are so similar? Anyways, folks, thanks for watching. I'm going to get out of here. Before you get out of here, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.